Okay, <clears throat> it's Friday. Um, <clears throat> as I said, I'm gonna start posting this video on Friday for everyone, and then just let the video stay up until the following Tuesday. Then there's no way I can get confused between class number four or class zero. That's my solution. Um, <clears throat> response papers are due next week. Make sure you check um, exactly when yours is due. This class, uh, the, the Thursday class, um, yours is due on the 25th, and I believe uh, the other classes it's due um, on your week 13, right? Which would be uh, on a Tuesday. So please make sure you submit your homework, your second response paper. <clears throat> Nobody has submitted yet. That's not abnormal, really. And yeah, nobody has submitted yet, but it's uh, for class zero and class three, it's the 30th for class four, the 25th of November. So don't forget, it's the first thing. <clears throat> Let me remind you, second response paper is due <clears throat> and uh, we may have one more homework thing before that, but probably not. <clears throat> I think it might be a little bit too tight to fit something in. I'll look at the grades and see if I think that we need to do one more homework assignment to get ready basically for the exam. But otherwise, the only major thing you have left is this response paper, okay? Um, I want to talk about <clears throat> narrative criticism uh, because I am an English li literature professor and uh, we talk about essays and composition from a sort of trying to be unbiased um, and to present this class as a like a skill-based class so that uh, students from any major can join the class and apply um, what you are learning to your major. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're in humanities or English specifically, you can be from science uh, faculty of science or business or engineering and you can still get the benefit um, so normally I don't talk about narratives because a narrative is a story right um, but I'm I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a few papers that are submitted next week that focus too much on the storytelling and not enough on the criticism okay so I want to talk about that. That's the, we're gonna talk about the article and the first part of uh, unit five, right? Which is about nature. It's called Nature Attacks. It's about natural disasters. <clears throat> um, and as I said, the, the thing that you have to be careful of is the textbook and the passages that we are using are not arguments uh, and they're not criticisms. They are, sometimes just descriptive or they are narratives they're telling a story so this is something to be aware of that that's not what you that's not what your professor wants in an english class unless they say that but it, when they say i want you to write an essay or i want you to write a response they don't want just story just description like they do here what they want is you to say you they want you to analyze and make connections right synthesize information they want you to use critical thinking like we've been talking about they want you to discuss they want you excuse me discuss they, they want you to discuss the the main issues that are related to the topic not just uh, you know read something about something that happened an event that can be described now there is such thing though especially in you know writing professionally uh, politically uh, in the media that there's definitely you know narratives right it's not just um, English literature books not just novels that you know or or movies <clears throat> it's not just the Avengers that have a narrative of the good guy is born and he's a really weak man and he grows up and he's being picked on and he tries to get in the American military but uh, he he's not he doesn't pass the physical, um, so but he gets selected by the you know American Secret Service 
um, science division and they uh, use him to experiment um, with this super soldier serum and he gets injected with it and it transforms him into Captain America. What am I doing right now? I'm telling you the details in order of a story. I am storytelling. That is a narrative. I am the narrator. And I am telling you a narrative, okay? <clears throat> That's the story, the way I am telling it, right? But if you heard it from, I don't know, um, a Korean woman who was uh, working for Samsung, let's just imagine, um, that's a very different profession than me and she's gonna explain it in another language and has a different cultural background. Uh, she might tell a story in a very different way. This her narrative, right? There is one story on the screen, but there's a, many different ways of telling it or interpreting it, right? And that's where um, things can become interesting is what you think that means, right? What, what is, who is Ca Captain America and what does he represent? Well, it's not just how he becomes Captain America. That, that is itself, though, can be criticized, right? Well, are we saying it's okay to take weak human beings and just put them in a you know, container, inject them with some strange chemical, and see what happens? And, oh, good, this guy, this guy turned into Captain America. He's a, he turns out to be a very honest, you know, hardworking, moral person, but what if he was a murderer? Or what if he was crazy and unstable? You know, none of that stuff is in the story. He's just some kid who, who wants to, he's naturally patriotic. He wants to fight for America. That also can be criticized. Why is this kid signing up for World War II? What's his motivation? These are criticisms, right? That's not just the narrative. You're saying, what is happening here? What am I watching? Why am I watching it? Right? Why am I watching? Why is his name Captain America? Because he's a symbol of patriotism. He's a symbol of the American military. In the original comic books, in, in, the, in the Marvel movies now, what you see is Captain America fighting aliens and fighting, sometimes he's fighting other, you know, heroes. He's fighting Iron Man or Thor whatever, and sometimes he's fighting like space robots and dragons and uh, of course Thanos, right? I, I hope I'm talking about some movies that you've all seen because, you know, I'm not that young anymore. So, so uh, sometimes when I talk about movies, like I mentioned The Matrix or Braveheart or Titanic or something like that, everybody's like, what are those? And that's because they were movies in the 90s and uh, all of you were not born yet. So maybe you haven't seen those movies, but the Marvel series is all recent. So you would have been in middle school, high school when a lot of these you know, narratives were put on the screen. So hopefully you can follow what I mean when I'm talking about Captain America. He's, he's symbolic of many things. And, and uh, like I said, some of the things are related to his name, some of the related to his, you know, the, the kind of, um, creation myth of, of, of Captain America. Where did he come from? How did, how did he become Captain America? Um, there's so many different things. I mean, it's endless. If you're a professor, it's uh, Captain America is a gold mine of criticism. Why isn't there a female Captain America? Why is there only a man? Well, because the military uh, still hasn't balanced contributions from women and men. Is that a problem? Uh, are we only, where's the promotion? If, if you want more people to sign up for the military, what about the other 50%? What about the Asian Americans? What about the African, where's the, where's the black super soldier? Where's the African American super soldier for all the young African American guys to look up to? Like how are you supposed to become Captain America if he's a blonde white guy all the time? Uh, you're gonna identify if you really want to advertise. I mean, I, I know there's Black Panther and everything, but he's not a super soldier. He's from Africa. There's criticism there too. Why is the only black superhero from a magical kingdom that doesn't exist called Wakanda? Okay, all of these things 
are not really told. They are ideas that come from the narrative, which I can criticize. That's what criticism is. It's, it's actually not that hard once you know what kind of ideas, if you look carefully and analyze, you can see what's going on. Um, then you have the ability, if you have lots of different ideas and perspectives, to say, well, the, these things happen, how are, they, how are they related to the ideas behind them? How are they related to what readers and, and audiences think and feel and how they behave, how does it affect their their perception of themselves and their perception, how does it reflect society? There's so many different ways. That's why um, that's why I like my job. That's why I like literary criticism, because I think it's fun. I think I think it's not just fun, I think it's important, more important that it, it is useful to know how to do that, and it, it's a tool for you to become a better person. To, to resist and understand um, how things are being presented and to be, you know, um, to be part of that criticism so that we may create things that um, are, are better morally, ethically, um, have more better portrayals of society and justice. Um, that's what I want in my society. That's where I want to live, is a place where we can, you know, enjoy our entertainment, but the, the images and the characters and the events in the narrative can um, um, give the right messages to the, the consumer, to the, the viewer, right? Okay, so like I said, you can do the same thing with this National Geographic stuff. We've already done it to a certain extent. It's, it's not nearly as complex as uh, Avengers Endgame or the movie Captain America, of course, uh, because we're just reading one page about one specific topic. But nonetheless, there is an opportunity for you to look at um, the subject critically. And you know, some of those critical thinking questions and dis discussion questions, they are designed to get you thinking in that way. Don't just watch and just not think about what why things are happening and how they're thing, how they're happening and what they mean. Um, so there is a little section here about writing a narrative paragraph on page 114, and they're specifically talking to you about format of events and time. So it's organized. Um, that if you include, I'm not saying you know when you're talking about your amazing person for your response paper. Um, I think I said famous person, didn't I? Famous person. Amazing person, famous person. <clears throat> um, the only reason I said famous is because uh, I sometimes when I, if I if I ask for a different topic and I say amazing, it might be, you know, your cousin or your father or your mother um, or yourself. But none of us are famous, so this makes you admit the requirement is a little bit, you know, a uh, smaller group of people. Everybody kind of has to know them, um, or or a population. They have to be generally popular uh, in a group of people for them to qualify as a topic. So don't forget that the person has to be famous. Um, it doesn't matter what country they're from, or or whether I know them or not. You can teach me about who the person is. If it's a famous person I don't know, it's not a problem. But must be famous somewhere. Okay, um, so you take the famous person and you're gonna have to talk about events, right? Um, and you're gonna have to make sure your description is organized. So they got, basically they have timestamps and format here. So when you write the time words, you can show the date, uh, you can show the exact time, um, you can show general time like in the morning, evening, or at night, or you can say it's before or after something. Um, so you have to use those transition words like next, after, before, finally, and then. Um, so use make use of that if, if that's relevant to your, it should be. I mean, I, you when you talk about the person, whoever it is, you, you have to give me enough information for context. I may, if it's Albert Einstein, I'm probably going to know uh, that he was born 
over in <clears throat> in um, Germany and he was Jewish and uh, he grew up in Germany and then he moved to the United States and uh, it's the 20th century but you have to provide that information at the beginning and be descriptive at the beginning right um, so there's two things that have to happen at the beginning of this response paper you need to be descriptive right but it it um, in this is this the part that is important that there needs to be some purpose right I'm not making you write an essay per se but like this is the basic idea of an, an essay there there has to be some reason that you're um, going to choose this person that's basically what I want I want you to pick something about them okay so you, you, you have to make a statement and it, you can, this, you can uh, write it as this is a, my objective is to show you that this person is this, this is my purpose. Or you can say, I've been interested in this. Um, this don't say I, that's my mistake. Say that's the way you speak. When you write, you should say this person is uh, important because reason, okay? This is more with your objective or your goal, that's fine. Or you can give the reason, right? Blah, 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 because this person is um, one of Korea's greatest individuals or this is um, somebody who is important in South African history um, because this is the thing that they contributed to society or whatever. Um, this So this argument, you might say something like, many people believe that this person is uh, um, a good person, right? <clears throat> a morally uh, admirable person. Uh, I already gave you the, the example of Christopher Columbus, right? Many people uh, think Christopher Columbus is somebody to admire, but I believe that he deserves, uh, doesn't deserve that credit and doesn't deserve that respect. That's an, you're building an argument there that you're going to persuade other people that this is the way that you th should think about this. Um, so you can build an argument uh, and start it out like that, then do the description. So let's just move that <clears throat> down. Then do your description, be descriptive, and then Do your analysis, right? And that's the way it's done. That's uh, that's the structure of the response paper that I'm asking you to do. Like I said, it's it's kind of like a junior essay. It's not a full developed essay. It doesn't need to have an introduction. Doesn't have to have a conclusion. But it does have to have a statement. That has has to have a topic statement, and it has to have a concluding statement, right? The description and analysis is the support. Okay, two types of support you're gonna use. Um, various types of ways you can do that with facts and narratives and description. And then, uh, like I said, taking ideas and connecting them to each other and associating them with um, consequences and actions and reactions um, that were uh, related to the person, right? And, it's, and that person's life. Uh, I hope there's a lot, there's, there's uh, more women than men in this class, so I hope there's a lot of women, actually. Um, it's one thing that I think is underrepresented when we choose famous people. Um, I forgot to talk about this, but unfortunately, uh, the two examples that were the primary people in, in our chapter, our unit four, were both men. Uh, they did talk about Amelia Earhart on page 90. Um, and. I mean, it's only two examples, so that's fine. But usually, if you have a hundred examples, um, there's going to be the majority of them are going to be men. But again, what we really need to promote here is uh, more equality between men and women. Uh, if it if it doesn't happen, um, we have to think about why it doesn't happen, right? Lots of people assume this is just natural that there would be more famous men than than women. That the proportion of, you know. Um, star roles in Hollywood happens to be white men just because white men are better at acting. It's obviously not true. It's the the um, 
other people have not been given a chance in the same way um, that the men have. Now, there is a, there was an African American, not an African, a Jamaican, I should say, excuse me. So Jamaican American guy um, that we, we looked at, right? Uh, Barrington. And then there was that, you know, um, British guy, um, Fiennes. Those are interesting stories, but it, it's nice to have um, good representation. So Einstein uh, is not a great choice for this article because he's, I mean, everybody, he's too famous, right? So try and be creative in, about your choice um, of topics. It doesn't, it's not going to affect your grade, but I just think it's good. I like to encourage, you know, some diversity in the choices that are made so that we don't recycle the same people over and over again. If everybody writes about Napoleon, Isaac Newton, Christopher Columbus, and Albert Einstein, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed, to be honest. I've read about those guys already many times. Um, so choosing, choosing um, a woman um, that is famous, but not the most famous among the most famous would be a good choice, especially for the young woman in the class. Uh, okay, <clears throat> before I get uh, too carried away, I think that's good enough explanation there. Like I said, easy to argue against somebody like Columbus. Um, I've, I saw a comedy skit the other day, uh, an American guy, an American comedian, actually he's, I, I believe he's Chinese American, but um, he makes a lot of jokes about Asians in general. Um, he sits down, uh, I guess he's in New York City, I'm assuming, and um, you know, there's this um, sort of cliche um, skit meme that's circulating around where uh, somebody sits down and they put a sign that says, prove me wrong, right? So <laughs> you walk up, right? So the person, the person writes a statement, whatever it is, right? So um, <clears throat> the, his, his choice was, uh, Thanksgiving is the worst holiday, I think. Thanksgiving is the worst holiday. And you may know that next uh, Thursday is American Thanksgiving. So this is not very good timing for any person who likes Thanksgiving. <clears throat> now he changes the sign for the skit. He changes them and says like, the, the, be the best fashion is buckles. For example, he's sitting there, um, he's a Chinese American guy, and he's got a pilgrim hat on, so he's dressed in black, and he's got a pilgrim hat with a big buckle on it, and he's got shoes with a big buckle on them. Uh, so he, he takes this position first, and everybody comes up and says, no, Thanksgiving is a great holiday. You go see your family, you peel vegetables, and he's like, peel vegetables? Who wants to peel vegetables? That's like saying Chusok and saying, oh, it's family time, there's good food, and you get to wash the dishes. <laughs> That's not a good way to prove somebody wrong. Who likes washing dishes? Who likes peeling vegetables? Anyway, these ladies came up to him and that was one of their points. That you get together with family, you have good food, and you peel vegetables. Okay, not doing a good job. Anyway, it's a comedy skit, so it's supposed to be funny. But one of, one of the guys says, one of the arguments says, Thanksgiving's not the worst holiday because some people celebrate Columbus Day. Right? Because it can't be worse than, like, Thanksgiving. Okay, Thanksgiving is a celebration of Europeans receiving the generosity of the native people. And then, consequently, subsequently, uh, they take all of their land and, just, and take over the entire country. And, you know, for native people, Thanksgiving isn't really a happy occasion. Because that, if they hadn't have been genero generous like that, maybe they would have a better situation now. It was kind of their ancestors generosity that that allowed the Europeans to get take advantage of them so in some sense they feel um, that that it was the Europeans um, didn't respect the contribution didn't they they that's not what the, the holiday is about the holiday is about instead celebrating American um, success um, domination 
family gatherings, relationships, and it doesn't really recognize what happened, you know, back in the 1620s when the Europeans were on the edge of starvation. And um, one tribe, in order to um, ally with the, the English, shared their food with them so that they could fight other natives. And they didn't realize that they were creating a monster, that by helping the English, they were creating an enemy many, many, many times worse than the other native tribes. It's a sad story, Thanksgiving, for them. Not a happy one. So there you go. <clears throat> criticism, again, this is where I'm coming from today, the narrative criticism. There's a narrative that talks about American family. There's a narrative that talks about European colonization. There's a narrative that talks about taking advantage, breaking promises, um, um, conquering and uh, exploiting native people by pitting them against each other. Um, those are all different narratives and they have varying effects on how people feel about the holiday. If you follow one narrative, it sounds like a good holiday. If you follow another one, it sounds like a disaster for an entire uh, continent of people. The article this week is about lightning <clears throat> and um, lightning is something that Benjamin Franklin recognized as electricity. Um, the article talks about things that are mostly factual, um, statistical, so you can uh, observe them or categorize them or count them. Um, the first question at the beginning of uh, Unit 5 is on page 107, do more men than women die from lightning? Um, yes, they do. Is it a good idea to go under a tall tree when there is lightning? No, it's not. Um, <clears throat> do scientists know everything about tornadoes? No, they don't. Does the United States have more tornadoes than any place in the world? Yes, it does. Now, um, you can do research for why these things are happening. Is it is it because men are men that they get hit by lightning more? Is it because they are taller or on average? Or is it because they, they are better conductors, their bodies uh, have more conducting material so that they attract electricity better than females? I don't think so. What, what is it? What is it that is the deciding factor between them? I don't know. Um, it's, uh, it's not something I've researched and it's not something I'm in my, within my field. So I think it's not my job to do that. But what it is your job is to think critically about everything. So what could it be? I have my suspicion is that um, men are encouraged to do outdoor activities from a young age and they're less cautious in general about um, <laughs> dangerous weather. Like uh, even I, uh, when I was young, did stupid things like play outside in the rain and then there was lightning and thunder and my mother had to say, Jeremy, there's lightning, you got to come in. You know, I, I ignored it. Um, and my, my sister never had any desire to do that. No, that's just, that's not a good argument because that's just Jeremy. Young, stupid Jeremy, uh, Canadian kid in the countryside. That's not something that maybe a Korean kid in Seoul would do. They wouldn't play in the park where there's lightning and rain. They just wouldn't do that. But I was a Canadian kid who was in the countryside. So yeah, I did that. And uh, another personal anecdote, um, a high school in the, the small town of Owen Sound. I, I didn't think it was a small town at the time because my town was smaller, but there was a, what I considered a small city, um, but now I know it was a town, <clears throat> Owen Sound, um, about 30 minutes away from my town. Uh, very popular guy, an athlete, um, leader of student council in the high school there that we used to play sports against. Uh, was hiking and was struck by lightning and killed. He was like 17 years old. Uh, I've never heard of anybody getting hit by lightning um, that, I, that I actually had a chance to actually meet, like, or that other people met. But there is, there is this story, this narrative here, that somebody else um, got hit by lightning, right? So they talk about, the article is organized, it's descriptive, 
It tells you what lightning is. Every second of every day, all over the world, there are more than 100 lightning bolts striking the earth, right? That's part of the descriptive part. <clears throat> but I want you, like they make the whole part descriptive and narrative. But like I said, I want that to be the smallest part of your paper. The largest part should be that analysis part, okay? So they talk to you, they tell you about lightning and how many fires and 84%, that's a crazy number. It's not, you know, 50% of human beings are women, 50-50 men, women, about, and 84% that get hit by lightning. That's eight, it's between eight and nine out of 10. That's really, really off. So there's gotta be more than one factor, I would think. Um, one of them's gotta be behavior. <clears throat> um, rather than physical characteristics, I don't think physical characteristics have anything to do with it. It has to do with where you are and what you are doing during the lightning storm. The girls are inside, if they can be, and some of the guys are not inside. They're in places where they can be hit by lightning. Why are they there? Uh, it goes through all these characteristics, how hot it is, $27,000, uh, uh, my, my tongue is tied today, 27,000 degrees, not dollars. There's no price for lightning, I think it's free. Um, it takes a tiny fraction of a second and it instantly cooks everything that it hits. Uh, it's, it's, as hotter than the, it's hotter than the surface of the sun. That's how powerful the energy of a lightning bolt is. Um, Empire State Building gets hit like 25 times a year. Uh, it doesn't get damaged because old Benjamin Franklin lightning rod is up there so that the lightning can travel down to the ground where it wants to go. It, it takes the shortest path. So tall tree in the middle of a field, bad idea because it's going to hit the tree, travel down the tree and possibly go through your body and kill you. So if you see thunder, you should find shelter and uh, you should crouch down, not lay down, but crouch down, make yourself small. Rubber boots are always a good idea. Don't wave your golf club or your baseball bat, that's metal in the air. Um, but there's an expression right at the end. This is a little narrative piece. They say that lightning never hits the same place twice, but that's not true. One man, Roy Sullivan, and I'm Jeremy Sullivan, as you know, but he's not my uncle. He's not related to me. Um, strange coincidence, there are a lot of Sullivans though. We, we originally come from Ireland and we've spread all over the world, so there's lots of Sullivans, just like there's lots of Kims. Uh, Roy Sullivan was hit by lightning seven different times in his life. Um, that's some pretty crazy, um, the, the chances, if I could still remember how to calculate things from my statistics class in high school, the uh, chances of that happening are very, 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 that's, you can win the lottery, right? You can win the lottery five times and the odds would be the same. Um, he got injured, but he didn't die each time. The chance of surviving seven lightning bolts must be even more um, ridiculous. Anyway, he died in 1983, but not from lightning. He killed himself because he was in love with a woman, but she didn't love him back. That's a pretty, that's what you call tragic irony, isn't it? That even though you're the unlucky, unluckiest person in the world, that you survive those lightning bolts and then you take your life anyway. Um, it's, it's almost like a Romeo and Juliet kind of um, ironic you know, situation. So don't do that. Don't put a narrative piece at the end um, just because it's interesting. That's the only reason they did that in the book. They just wanted to throw in something, uh, some narrative piece that was really interesting and it, it just leaves you with this impression, oh my God, that poor guy, that is, that is the, you know, that's a twist. Uh, that's what an ir irony does to you. It's just like, oh no, why would you do that? And, and uh, that leaves you with a strong impression. So it's kind of a piece of journal journalism. They're trying to just leave you with a very strong impression but I don't want you to do that. Please follow the format, right? Topic sentence, description, analysis, do your support, concluding statement. Leave me with something complete. Don't leave me with, the, with this, you know, strange impression, emotional event, um, or ironic twist at the end. That is a narrative.
They're using narrative strategy. You use the narrative as part of your description of the famous person, that's fine. Don't end with it. That's not the right structure. Okay, and that, that's it for today. Thank you for listening, and um, we'll, I'll see you again next week. Please finish up your papers and hand them in by the deadline. Have a good weekend.